Stanton II, or Crusader, the massive gas giant which has loomed over us from the beginning, more than five years ago. While not necessarily pushing the game forward a significant amount, the addition of a fully explorable Crusader is actually a pretty important moment for the game in different ways, and an exciting addition to the 314 update branch. Here is everything we currently know about Crusader, what it means for Star Citizen, and what we might expect going forward. Thank you for coming to My Tomato Talk. Thanks to my newest Patreon members, Felix G, Aliyah and Jotin, Stuart Granger, Jomanda, Abdulwak Johannes, Shadow Rise, and Bilal El Yassim. Crusader, while being the first planet we were given access to in Stanton all the way back in 2015, has been looming over Port Olisar ever since. We all know it well as the inaccessible gas giant that has changed sizes throughout the years, and despite being the planet we've known the longest, we still don't know much about how the full planet will be implemented. We don't know how far down into the atmosphere we can even go. Will we get crushed by the atmosphere in a red out death? How will outposts work? Will they be small areas around the world like in R Corp that we can't really explore that much? We don't know how no-fly zones will work. Will there even be no-fly zones? How will weather differ from regular planets? Will there be massive storms with clouds that envelop the entire landing zone? We really just don't know. And the funny thing about these questions is I wrote them all back in June of 2019, when I thought the planet may be closer. And it's been two years now. We still don't know the answers to these questions. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not often CIG has had the chance to shroud a game asset in so much mystery. This is a great opportunity for the community to answer these questions on their own, and experiment with an environment that has, as far as I know, never been done in-game before. It could be a very significant experience, especially with the inclusion of Star Citizen's first volumetric planetary clouds. We've seen 2D clouds on planets, we've seen space-based gas clouds, concept art, and even some sneak peeks of the planetary clouds, but the technology itself has not made it into the game yet, despite being planned for since the very beginning, and discussed publicly for several years. This feature has taken a whole bunch of work and a lot of optimization to make work in-game, but this is just the first implementation and it's only coming to this initial gas giant. But that's not to say that it won't be scaled and applied to every planet we know in the game, creating convincing and very nice looking weather systems everywhere that we go. But since we've been talking about things we don't know about this planet, let's touch a little bit on the things we do know. Admittedly, that's not very much, but the one thing we know for sure is that this is the location that the first creature may be possibly implemented. Known as the Storm Wall, this creature is also commonly known as the Space Whale. And this is going to be a big deal, we don't have creatures in the game yet, and Fauna and Flora are going to be a big part of making the game feel a little bit more alive, and we know that creatures are being worked on in the background, we've seen it on monthly reports, we've seen it on videos put out by the company, and now it's just a matter of waiting to see when we'll be able to get our first whale watching tour. And where we've gotten most of the information about this planet is actually about the landing zone. Star Citizen's own cloud city, Orison. This city was created by Crusader Industries as a high-altitude, oxygen-rich environment in which they can build their massive spaceships with less transportation cost. Does this outweigh the costs of keeping a whole city in the air? I don't know, but it's pretty cool. Crusader is the owner of the planet, obviously, as this planet, like every planet in this star system, was sold to private companies in order to raise funds for the government. So Crusader can do whatever they want with the area, much like Hurston, Microtech, and Arcorp have all gone their own ways. Let's take a look into the overall design of this city. For years now, we've known the concept art of Orison, and the design has definitely changed over the years, trending from circular self-contained hubs to longer catwalks and large flowing cityscapes. The more detailed recent concept pictures showed us the clean, stylistic, and friendly details of the various platforms that make up the city. These shots also showed that even though the shape of the platforms has changed, the distinct buildings are still recognizable. The last year or so has allowed us the opportunity to finally begin seeing these assets in-game though, giving us a clear look at what we should expect. And just like landing zones in the past, this one will bring several new features that will be retroactively added to other cities. 
Locations and elements that will be used for in-city missions. New dynamic elements falling and floating around the city. Massive sight lines that call for new methods of optimization and lighting. Possibly taking advantage of the brand new particle lighting system coming to the game. And interactive tour guides meant to showcase new NPC additions. This first iteration of the city will include several different platforms you can visit throughout the sky, all meant for different tasks. And they are beautiful. They've developed their own style, separated from the utilitarian and high-tech looks of the others we've had, taking advantage of more natural materials and light. This first edition will include the spaceport, gardens area to loiter around, the primary city center known as Cloudview, where you can shop and get an apartment, and the shipyard, where Crusader Industries builds their ships. We don't actually know what we'll find at this shipyard besides eye candy, but I imagine there will be a mission giver or two planted there in the future. The next edition, currently scheduled for the end of the year, is meant to further flesh out all of these areas with more services and additional shops. That being said, Cloudview already seems to have a good selection of places to shop and a bar with incredible views. But like every other landing zone, all this will be improved in version 2 towards the end of the year, with additional work being done throughout the years in the future. A focus on this city was to create a soothing, interesting environment that created unique areas to visit and spend time. I think we can all agree this is one of the most beautiful locations they've created in games so far. The moving elements, the spaceships flying in and out of the city, the grand vista, the volumetric clouds, it's all great. But there's not going to be gameplay if they don't specifically state it. So besides specific missions being moved into here that are existent in other places of the star system, I can't tell you if there's going to be anything more to this city than just a new place to visit. So don't get your hopes up. There's still some stuff to learn about Orison. We've seen quite a bit, but we haven't gotten our hands on it yet, except for maybe Evocati by the time I publish this video. But there's even more to learn about Crusader. We don't know anything about this planet. And there's a chance that we'll learn more before the planet is even released. But as of now, you can expect a beautiful and expansive floating city that will be a joy to visit, but will likely not bring any major changes to gameplay for those looking for it. If you are looking for that gameplay, I highly suggest you check out the scanning, missile changes, multi-crew changes, and power management changes all coming to gameplay in 314. I will be hopefully making a video about this in the near future, but I also have a video about the scanning that I put out recently that you can check as well. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and possibly hit that notification bell if you want to know when all the new news is coming out. <laughs> new news. And if you really like this content and you want to support it and keep it coming, you can support me on Patreon for a dollar a month. I would very much appreciate that. But if you also just want to play the game, well, we have an org. The Garden Interstellar Initiative is on Discord, and we're playing every day with multiple events coming up every month. And if you're into other games, well, we have a general gaming Discord as well, where you can come and group up with other people and play a multitude of games. Both of those links are in the video description, along with my Twitch link, where you can come chat with me every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and win some prizes and ships. And don't forget to go back in the video and find that secret code that I've placed to help you get extra entries into my massive giveaway, where you can win a Starlifter, a Cutlass Black, or a Mustang Alpha, all with Star Citizen included. Finally, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Falcus Vipus, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber 7, El Gordo, and Stuart Granger.